Next topic, collective bargaining. What is the meaning of collective bargaining unit? Collective bargaining unit refers to a group of employees within a given employer unit who share mutual interests in wages, hours of work, working conditions, and other subjects of collective bargaining. A bargaining unit may be composed of number one, all or less than all of the entire body of employees in the employer unit. Example, bargaining unit of rank and file workers, bargaining unit of supervisors, bargaining unit of hourly paid workers, bargaining unit of daily paid workers, or bargaining unit of monthly paid rank and file workers. Number two, an occupational grouping within the employer unit. For example, in an airline company, Pilots, flight attendants, and ground personnel constitute separate bargaining units because they do not share mutual interests in wages, hours of work, and other working conditions. In a school, teaching personnel constitutes a bargaining unit separate from non-teaching personnel. Number three, a geographical grouping within the employer unit. For instance, in a soft drink manufacturing company with plants in Manila, Cebu, and Davao, the employees of the Manila plant may establish a bargaining unit separate from the Cebu plant or the Davao plant. Collective bargaining unit must be appropriate. Article 267 of the Labor Code of the Philippines speaks of appropriate collective bargaining unit without giving a definition. How do we determine whether a bargaining unit is an appropriate bargaining unit? To be considered appropriate, a bargaining unit must be a grouping of employees who have substantial mutual interests in wages, hours of work, working conditions, and other subjects of collective bargaining. Note the factors to be considered in fixing the appropriate bargaining unit. Number one, will of the employees or the GLOBE doctrine. Number two, community of employees' interests. Number three, similarity of employment status. And number four, prior collective bargaining history. The GLOBE doctrine. Under the GLOBE doctrine, the main consideration in fixing the appropriate collective bargaining unit is the express will or desire of the employees. The doctrine sanctions the holding of a series of elections, not for the purpose of determining the collective bargaining agent, but for the specific purpose of permitting the employees in each of the several categories to select the collective bargaining unit. The Community of Interest Rule, also known as the Substantial Mutual Interest Rule. Here, the main consideration in fixing the appropriate collective bargaining unit is the affinity and unity of the employee's interest, such as substantial similarity of working conditions. The similarity of employment status rule. Under this rule, the main consideration in fixing the appropriate collective bargaining unit is the status of employment. The rule requires that non-regular employees be grouped as one category and the regular employees be grouped as another category. Prior collective bargaining history. This is also a factor in determining the appropriate bargaining unit, although it is not a decisive factor. Prior collective bargaining history may be disregarded where the circumstances have changed, where they can no longer be considered as a reliable guide in determining the present bargaining unit. One company, one union policy. The general policy is one company, one union. The reason for this is to strengthen the bargaining power of the employees by their unity and solidarity rather than diminish it by disunity, division, or dissension. What are the exceptions to the one company, one union policy? Number one, when supervisory employees organize themselves into a bargaining unit separate and distinct from the bargaining unit of rank and file employees. The reason, the one company, one union policy cannot be applied because Article 249 of the Labor Code of the Philippines expressly prohibits supervisory employees from joining the organization of rank and file employees. Number two, where the employer unit has to give way to other bargaining units like the craft unit or plant unit. For instance, in an airline company, separate bargaining units may be formed for ground personnel, cabin attendants, and pilots. In an educational institution, separate bargaining units may be formed for teaching personnel and non-teaching personnel. In a hospital, separate bargaining units may be formed for doctors and nurses. The reason is because the employees belonging to a particular class do not share mutual interests in wages, hours of work, working conditions, and other subjects of collective bargaining. Number three, when a certain class of employees are excluded from the coverage of the existing bargaining unit. This is so that the employees concerned 
will not be deprived of the right to collective bargaining. Separate bargaining units for every corporation. Two or more corporations cannot be treated as a single bargaining unit, even if their businesses are related, even if some of the employees of one corporation are manning and providing for auxiliary services to the other corporation, and even if the physical plants, offices, and facilities are situated in the same compound. This is because the two companies are distinct entities with separate juridical personalities. What is the meaning of collective bargaining agent? The collective bargaining agent or representative is the legitimate labor organization certified by the Department of Labor and Employment to bargain with the employer for better terms and conditions of employment on behalf of the employees covered by the bargaining unit. Remember, the collective bargaining agent must be certified. To validly negotiate a collective bargaining agreement with an employer, the labor organization must be certified as bargaining agent. Who can be certified as a bargaining agent? Only a legitimate labor organization can be certified as collective bargaining agent. How can a union be certified as collective bargaining agent? Number one, through SEBA certification. Or number two, through certification election. SEBA certification. SEBA certification is proper only when there is no other legitimate labor organization within the bargaining unit sought to be represented by the union. Suppose there is more than one legitimate labor organization within the bargaining unit. The proper course of action is certification election. How can a union obtain a SEBA certification? File a request with the regional office of the Department of Labor and Employment that issued its Certificate of Registration or Certificate of Creation of Chartered Local. Supporting documents must be attached to the application, specifically, number one, Certificate of Registration or Certificate of Creation of Local Chapter to prove that the union is a legitimate labor organization. And number two, list of the employees comprising a majority who supported the request for SEBA certification. The union president must certify that all the documents submitted are true and correct based on his own personal knowledge. What should you allege in the application? Number one, the name and address of the labor organization. Number two, the name and address of the company where it operates. Number three, there is no other legitimate labor organization within the bargaining unit it seeks to represent. Number four, the bargaining unit sought to be represented. Number five, that it represents the majority of the employees covered by the bargaining unit. And number six, the approximate number of employees in the bargaining unit. The SEBA certification must be posted. Once issued, the SEBA certification should be posted in two conspicuous places in the establishment. What is the effect of SEBA certification? Number one, the union becomes the certified collective bargaining agent of the employees covered by the bargaining unit. Number two, filing of a petition for certification election is barred for a period of one year from the date of the issuance of the SEBA certification. Note the SEBA certification year bar rule. No petition for certification election shall be filed or entertained within one year from the date of the issuance of the SEBA certification. What is a certification election? Certification election is the process of determining through secret ballot the sole and exclusive collective bargaining agent of the employees in an appropriate bargaining unit. Petitions for certification election are handled by the mediators arbiters or med arbiters. What is the scope of the authority of the med arbiter in a certification proceeding? In a certification proceeding, the authority of the med arbiter is limited to number one, determining whether the petition for certification election should be granted or not. Number two, corollary to this, the med arbiter can resolve issues pertaining to existence or non-existence of employer-employee relationship or eligibility for union membership or appropriateness of the bargaining unit. The med arbiter cannot resolve issues pertaining to number one, validity of the registration of the union, except when the union is not registered in the roster of legitimate labor organizations. Number two, validity of the registration of the CBA except when the CBA is not registered in the Registry of Collective Bargaining Agreements. This is because questions on the validity of the registration of the union or CBA are cognizable by the regional director in an independent petition for cancellation of registration. Validity of registration cannot be attacked collaterally. When do certification proceedings start? The certification proceedings start upon the filing of a petition for certification election with the Regional Office of the Department of Labor and Employment 
that issued the Certificate of Registration or Certificate of Creation of Chartered Local. When can a petition for certification election be filed? Number one, in unorganized establishments, anytime. What is an unorganized establishment? An unorganized establishment is a company where there is no certified collective bargaining agent for a specific bargaining unit. For instance, a company where there is a certified bargaining agent for the rank-and-file employees but none for the supervisors is considered as an unorganized establishment with regard to the supervisors. A company where there is a certified collective bargaining agent for the daily paid rank-and-file employees but none for the monthly paid rank-and-file employees is considered as an organized establishment with respect to the monthly paid rank-and-file employees. Number two, in organized establishments during the freedom period. When can a petition for certification election not be filed? Number one, within one year from holding of certification election or the election year bar. Number two, within one year from certification as bargaining agent or the certification or negotiation year bar. Number three, when there is a bargaining deadlock that has been submitted to conciliation or arbitration or has become the subject of a valid notice of strike or lockout or the deadlock bar. Number four, when there is a duly registered CBA or the contract bar. Who can file a petition for certification election? Number one, an independent union. Number two, a local chapter that has been issued a charter certificate by a duly registered federation or national union. Number three, a duly registered federation or national union on behalf of its local chapter whom it has issued a charter certificate. Or number four, an employer when requested to bargain collectively. Petition filed by independent union. An independent union can file a petition for certification election, but this presupposes that the union has already been issued a certificate of registration. Suppose the union has filed an application for registration, but its certificate of registration has not yet been issued. Can it file a petition for certification election? The answer is yes. An independent union can already file a petition for certification election while waiting for the approval of its application for registration provided that the application has no infirmity. Petition filed by a local chapter. When can a local chapter file a petition for certification election? If it has already been issued a charter certificate by a duly registered federation or national union. Petition filed by a federation or national union. When can a federation or a national union file a petition for certification election on behalf of its local chapter? If it has already issued a charter certificate to the local chapter. Petition filed by the employer. What is the legal standing of an employer in a certification proceeding? In a certification proceeding, the employer is generally considered as a mere bystander because certification election is the sole concern of the workers. What is the role of the employer in a certification proceeding? It is generally limited to, number one, being notified of the proceedings, and number two, submitting the list of employees during the pre-election conference. What are the exceptions to the bystander principle? An employer can validly oppose a petition for certification election on certain grounds. Number one, lack of employer-employee relationship between the company and the employees sought to be represented by the petitioning union. This is because the duty to bargain collectively arises only between an employer and its employees. When neither party is an employer or an employee of the other, no such duty exists. And there being no such duty to bargain collectively, it would be pointless to hold a certification election. Number two, lack of legitimacy on the part of the petitioning union because it is not listed in the Registry of Legitimate Labor Unions or its registration has been cancelled with finality. This is because an unregistered labor organization cannot be certified as collective bargaining agent. Hence, it would be futile to hold a certification election. Number three, the bargaining unit is not an appropriate bargaining unit because the union is a mixture of supervisors and rank and file. This is because a union that represents an inappropriate bargaining unit cannot be certified as collective bargaining agent. Hence, it would be useless to hold a certification election. Number four, lack of 25% consent in an organized establishment, an employer can validly oppose a petition for certification election when the petition is not supported by the written consent of 25% of the employees covered by the bargaining unit. This is because 
Lack of 25% consent is an indication that the petitioning union does not represent a group of employees who have substantial interest in the certification election. Number five, the petition is barred by the election year bar, that is, one year from the holding of the certification election, or the certification or negotiation year bar, that is, one year from certification as bargaining agent, or the deadlock bar, that is, when there is a bargaining deadlock that has been submitted to conciliation or arbitration or has become the subject of a valid notice of strike or lockout, or the contract bar, that is, when there is a duly registered CBA. Can an employer file a petition for certification election? The answer is yes, when requested to bargain collectively. Here, the 25% consent is not necessary. When an employer files a petition for certification election, it is not necessary to support the petition with the consent of 25% of the employees within the bargaining unit. After the filing of the petition, the employer reverts to its status as bystander. To reiterate, regarding petition for certification election in unorganized establishment, when can a petition for certification election be filed in unorganized establishments? This can be filed anytime. The mere filing of a verified petition is enough for the med arbiter to issue an order calling for a certification election. But note that the petition need not be supported by 25% consent of the employees covered by the bargaining unit. On the other hand, in petitions for certification elections in organized establishments, when can a petition for certification election be filed? This is only during the freedom period. Take note, the freedom period is the 60-day period prior to the expiry of a duly registered CBA. The petition must be supported by 25% consent of the employees covered by the bargaining unit. What is the purpose of the 25% consent requirement? This is to show that the petitioning union represents the group of employees of the company who have substantial interest in the election. The 25% consent need not be established with mathematical precision. What is the significance of the 25% consent requirement? Number one, if there is a 25% written consent, it is mandatory on the part of the med arbiter to order a certification election. Number two, if the written consent falls short of the 25% statutory requirement, it is no longer mandatory but discretionary on the part of the med arbiter to call a certification election, which means that the med arbiter may or may not order a certification election. Number three, if the petition is totally unsupported by the 25% written consent, the petition for certification election should be dismissed. Suppose the employees withdraw their consent. What is the effect? Number one, if made before the filing of the petition, the med arbiter may not order the holding of a certification election. This is because, in effect, the petition lacks the required written consent. It can be presumed that the withdrawal or retraction made before the filing of the petition is voluntary because the names of employees who supported the petition are supposed to be unknown to the opposite party. Number two, if made after the filing of the petition, the med arbiter can still order the holding of a certification election. This is because it can be presumed that the withdrawal was procured through duress, coercion, or for valuable consideration, considering that the employees who supported the petition are already known to the opposite party since their names are attached to the petition. Hence, the best forum to determine if there was indeed undue pressure exerted upon the employees is the certification election itself. Intervention Who can intervene in a certification proceeding? Legitimate labor unions with substantial interest. How can a union intervene in the certification proceedings? This is by filing a motion for intervention. When can a motion for intervention be filed? Number one, in unorganized establishments. This is at any time prior to the decision of the med arbiter. Number two, in organized establishments. This is within the freedom period. Note that the 25% consent is not necessary. A motion for intervention need not be supported by the written consent of 25% of the employees within the bargaining unit. Take note, the incumbent collective bargaining agent is an automatic intervener. Hence, it is always one of the choices in a certification election. Motion to dismiss. Can a party move for the dismissal of a petition for certification election? The answer is yes on the following grounds. Number one, lack of employer-employee relationship between the company and the members of the petitioning union. Number two, lack of legitimacy on the part of the petitioning union because it is not listed in the Registry of Legitimate Labor Unions or its registration has been cancelled with finality. 
Number three, lack of written consent of 25% of the employees within the bargaining unit in organized establishments. Number four, the bargaining unit sought to be represented is not an appropriate bargaining unit. Number five, the petition is barred by the election year bar, that is, one year from holding of certification election, certification or negotiation year bar, that is, one year from certification as bargaining agent, deadlock bar, that is, when there is a bargaining deadlock that has been submitted to conciliation or arbitration or has become the subject of a valid notice of strike or lockout, or the contract bar, that is, when there is a duly registered CBA. Number six, failure of the federation or local chapter to attach the charter certificate to the petition. Number seven, failure of the petitioner to appear before the med arbiter for two consecutive conferences despite notice. Suspension of certification proceedings. If an unfair labor practice case has been filed against a participant union for being a company union, the unfair labor practice case must first be decided before conducting a certification election. If a petition for cancellation of registration has been filed against a participant union, should the certification proceedings be suspended? The answer is no. Dependency of a petition for cancellation of registration filed against a participant union is not a ground for suspension of the certification proceedings. Preliminary conference. If no motion to dismiss or suspend is filed, or if the motion to dismiss or suspend is denied, a preliminary conference will be conducted by the med arbiter for the purpose of determining the bargaining unit, the possibility of consent election, and other relevant matters. Consent election. During the preliminary conference, the contending unions may agree on the holding of a certification election. This is called consent election. What is the significance of the consent election? In a consent election, the med arbiter no longer renders a decision on the merits of the petition. Instead, a pre-election conference will be scheduled to discuss the mechanics of the election. Order decision. If the parties cannot agree on a consent election, the med arbiter will resolve the merits of the petition. The med arbiter may order the dismissal of the petition for lack of merit or order the holding of a certification election. Appeal. Can an order or decision of the med arbiter in a certification proceeding be appealed? Number one, in unorganized establishments, the order or decision granting the petition is not appealable. The order or decision dismissing the petition is appealable to the Secretary of Labor and Employment within 10 days from receipt thereof. Number two, in organized establishments, an order or decision granting or dismissing the petition is appealable to the Secretary of Labor and Employment within 10 days from receipt thereof. Pre-election conference. If the order or decision calling for a certification election becomes final and executory, a pre-election conference will be set for the purpose of discussing the mechanics of the election, specifically the date and time of election, qualified voters, names of watchers, polling places, inclusion-exclusion of voters, and other relevant matters. Who are qualified to vote in a certification election? All employees covered by the appropriate bargaining unit who have been in service for at least three months prior to the filing of the petition, whether union members or not. Therefore, the following employees can vote in a certification election. Number one, probationary employees. This is because they also have a substantial interest in the selection of bargaining representative. Number two, striking employees. This is because they continue to enjoy employee status during the strike. Number three, members of religious sects which prohibit membership in a labor organization. This is because the law also accords them the right to self-organization. Number four, dismissed employees whose complaints for illegal dismissal have not yet been decided with finality. But take note, their ballots will be segregated. What will happen if there is a disagreement over the eligibility of voters? All contested voters will be allowed to vote, but their ballots will be segregated in individually sealed envelopes. Notice of Election this is a mandatory requirement which cannot be waived. The notice of election should contain number one, the date and time of the election, number two, names of all contending unions, number three, description of the bargaining unit, and number four, list of eligible and challenged voters. Remember that the notice of election should be posted at least 10 days before the actual date of the election in two most conspicuous places in the company premises. Posting of the notice of election is a mandatory requirement which cannot be waived by the parties. Who is responsible for the posting of the notice of election? 
it is the regional director or his duly authorized representative, and the petitioner shall be responsible for the posting of the notice of election. Challenging of votes. Can a voter be challenged? The answer is yes, if he is not covered by the bargaining unit or he is not an employee of the company. When should the challenge be done? This is before the ballot is deposited in the ballot box. Who can challenge a voter? It is the authorized representative of any of the contending unions. How should the challenged voters be handled? The election officer shall place the challenged ballot in an envelope, seal the envelope in the presence of the voter, the employer, and the representative of the contending unions, indicate on the envelope the voter's name, the party challenging the voter, and the ground for the challenge. He should sign the sealed envelope together with the employer and the representatives of all the contending unions. He should record all the challenges in the minutes of the election and he should consolidate all envelopes containing the challenged votes. When will the sealed envelopes be opened? Only when the number of segregated voters will materially alter the results of the election. Election protest. Who can file an election protest? Only the party in interest can file a protest. A labor organization which did not take part in the certification election cannot protest. The protest must be recorded in the minutes of the election proceedings. Remember that protests not so raised are deemed waived. The protest must be formalized within five days after the close of the election proceedings. Otherwise, the protest shall be deemed dropped. What is the meaning of after the close of election proceedings? The phrase after the close of election proceedings refers to that period from the closing of the polls to the counting and the tabulation of votes. Rerun election. Suppose the election resulted in a tie. What would be the course of action? This is to conduct a rerun election. A rerun election is a voting conducted when the certification election, consent election, or runoff election results in a tie between two choices. When should a rerun election be conducted? This is within 10 days from the posting of the notice of rerun election. Runoff election. What is a runoff election? This is a voting conducted when, in a certification election, with at least three choices, none of the choices obtained a majority of the valid votes cast, and the total number of votes for all contending unions is at least 50% of the total number of votes cast, without challenged ballots which can materially alter the results. Under what conditions can a runoff election be conducted? Number one, the certification election should have at least three choices. None of the choices obtained a majority of the valid votes cast. The total votes for all contending unions are at least 50% of the number of votes cast. And there are no challenged ballots which can materially alter the results. Who can participate in a runoff election? Only the two labor unions having the highest number of votes can participate in a runoff election. Remember that no union is not a choice in a runoff election. Suppose the second highest is a tie between two or more unions who will participate in the runoff election. The tie should be broken first through a rerun election. The union that emerges as the winner can participate in the runoff election. The same voters list used in the certification election shall be used in the runoff election. Failure of election. What is considered as failure of election? This is when the majority of the eligible voters were not able to vote. What course of action should be taken in case of failure of election? One should file a motion for the immediate holding of another election within six months from the declaration of the failure of election. Suppose a failure of election was declared can a new union file a petition for certification election? The answer is no. The filing of a new petition for certification election would still be barred under the circumstances because, number one, in unorganized establishments, the new petition for certification election would be barred by the final decision or order of the med arbiter. Remember that in unorganized establishments, a motion for intervention can be filed at any time before the decision of the med arbiter. If a motion for intervention cannot be filed after the decision of the med arbiter, Necessarily, a petition for certification election cannot be filed after the decision of the med arbiter. Number two, in organized establishments, the new petition for certification election would be barred by the contract bar rule because it was filed after the lapse of the freedom period. Note that the CBA does not cease to be effective at the end 
of the five-year term. The CBA continues to be effective until a new agreement is reached. Valid election. What is considered as a valid election? This is when the majority of the eligible voters were able to vote. What is the effect of a valid election? A valid election will bar any union from filing a petition for certification election within one year from the holding of the election. Election year bar rule. No petition for certification election can be filed or entertained within one year from the holding of a valid certification election. The election year bar rule presupposes that an actual election was conducted and the election was valid as distinguished from a failure of election. Can the election year bar rule be applied in the case of failure of election? The answer is no. If failure of election is declared, the remedy is for the petitioner to file a motion for the immediate holding of another election with the same participants within six months from the declaration of the failure of election. Certification as collective bargaining agent. The union that wins in the certification election will be certified as the collective bargaining agent if, number one, no protest is filed within the five-day period from the close of the election proceedings, and number two, no challenge or eligibility issue was raised, or if one was raised, the resolution of the same will not materially alter the election results. What is the effect of certification as bargaining agent? Number one, certification qualifies the union to act as the exclusive collective bargaining agent of the employees covered by the bargaining unit. Number two, it will bar any union from filing a petition for certification election within one year from certification. Note the certification year or negotiation year bar rule. No petition for certification election can be filed or entertained within one year from certification as collective bargaining agent. The one-year period is reckoned not necessarily from the date of the certification election, but from the date of the proclamation or certification as bargaining agent. Within this one-year period, the certified bargaining agent must initiate the collective bargaining negotiations. Collective bargaining negotiations When should the certified bargaining agent start the CBA negotiations? This is within one year from certification as bargaining agent. Is the employer obliged to initiate the CBA negotiations? The answer is no. The initiative to negotiate should come from the union. If the employer receives the collective bargaining proposals, what would be its obligation? The employer should give a reply or counter-proposal as mandated under Article 261A of the Labor Code of the Philippines. Suppose the employer does not give a reply or counter-proposal, can the employer be held liable for violation of the duty to bargain? The answer is no. Mere failure of an employer to reply or submit a counter-proposal within the 10-day period is not a violation of the duty to bargain collectively. The 10-day period is merely procedural and non-compliance thereof is not unfair labor practice. However, if the employer totally disregards the proposal without giving the union the benefit of a reply or presents a counter-proposal on a take-it-or-leave-it basis, a violation of the duty to bargain is committed. Suppose the parties met at the negotiating table, but they cannot agree on the terms of the CBA, what courses of action can they take? Number one, bring the matter to the NCMB for conciliation and mediation. Number two, submit the matter for arbitration. Or number three, declare a strike or lockout. Note the deadlock bar rule. No petition for certification election can be filed or entertained when the CBA negotiations that resulted in a deadlock has been submitted to conciliation or arbitration or is the subject of a valid notice of strike or lockout. Suppose the parties have agreed on the terms of the CBA. What would be the next course of action? The union officers and representatives of management will sign the CBA. After signing, what is the next step? The signed CBA should be posted in at least two conspicuous places in the establishment for five days. What is the purpose of the posting requirement? This is to inform the covered employees about the terms and conditions of the CBA. Can the parties waive the posting of the CBA? The answer is no. Posting is a mandatory requirement. It cannot be waived. Suppose the posting cannot be done because of a strike by another union in the company. Can the posting of the CBA be dispensed with? The answer is no, because posting is a mandatory requirement which cannot be waived. After the lapse of the posting period, what is the next step? 
the CBA should be submitted to the employees covered by the bargaining unit for ratification. Who will ratify the CBA? The employees covered by the bargaining unit. Why is ratification necessary? This is because the CBA is entered into by an agent. Can ratification be waived? No. Ratification is a mandatory requirement. It cannot be waived. When can the CBA be considered as ratified? If approved by the majority of the employees covered by the bargaining unit. After ratification, what is the next step? The CBA should be submitted to the Department of Labor and Employment for registration. When should the registration be done? This is within 30 days from the execution of the CBA. Note the registration requirements. To register a CBA, the parties should submit the following documents. Number one, original and two copies of the CBA. And number two, joint affidavit by the employer and the union attesting that the CBA was ratified by the majority of the employees in the bargaining unit and posted in at least two conspicuous places in the establishment five days before its ratification. Why is registration necessary? This is for stable and undisturbed administration of the CBA. Why do we say that a registered CBA will result in stable and undisturbed administration of the CBA? This is because a duly registered CBA will bar the filing of a petition for certification election by any union. Note the contract bar rule. If there is a duly registered CBA, a petition for certification election cannot be filed or entertained except during the 60-day period prior to the expiry of the five-year term of the CBA. Only a duly registered CBA can bar the filing of a petition for certification election. What is the meaning of duly registered? Duly registered means that all the requirements for registration have been complied with. Suppose the parties were able to register their CBA despite certain deficiencies. Will the contract bar rule apply? The contract bar rule will not apply because the CBA is not a duly registered CBA. Here are examples of registered CBAs that will not bar a petition for certification election. Number one, a CBA that was registered without complying with the posting requirement is not a duly registered CBA. Hence, it will not bar any union from filing a petition for certification election. Number two, a CBA that was entered into with a labor organization that has not been certified as bargaining agent will not bar a union from filing a petition for certification election even if the CBA was registered. Number three, a CBA which does not provide for benefits more than what the law provides will not bar a petition for certification election even if the CBA was registered. Number four, a CBA that was hastily entered into prior to the 60-day freedom period will not bar a union from filing a petition for certification election even if the CBA was registered. Is an unregistered CBA valid? Yes, it is still valid and binding between the parties. What is the effect of an unregistered CBA? It will not bar the filing of a petition for certification election by another union. What is the term of a CBA? Insofar as the representation aspect is concerned, the term of a duly registered CBA is five years reckoned from the date of its effectivity. This means that during the five-year period, no other union can challenge the majority representation of the incumbent bargaining agent except during the freedom period, that is, within the last 60 days of the five-year period. Again, the freedom period is the 60-day period prior to the expiration of the CBA. Why is it called the freedom period? This is because it is the time when, number one, a union member can validly resign from the union, number two, a local union can disaffiliate from its mother federation, number three, the majority status of the incumbent collective bargaining agent can be challenged through a petition for certification election. Or number four, the parties can seek the termination or modification of the existing CBA. Can the CBA be renegotiated within the five-year period? The answer is yes, not later than three years after its execution. When will the renegotiated CBA take effect? Number one, if the parties were able to come to an agreement within six months from the expiry of the third year of the CBA, the effectivity shall retroact to the day immediately following the expiry of the third year. Number two, if the agreement was arrived at after six months from expiry of the third year of the CBA, the parties and no one else are given the discretion to fix the effectivity thereof. Number three, if six months have elapsed and the negotiations resulted in a deadlock 
and the matter was submitted for arbitration, the effectivity shall be the date when the arbitrator's decision becomes final. Suppose the parties renegotiated their CBA during the third year of effectivity, but in the course of negotiations, a new union filed a petition for certification election. Can the employer validly suspend the CBA negotiations? The answer is no. This is because a petition for certification election was filed outside of the 60-day freedom period. If the 60-day freedom period expires without any challenge on the majority representation of the incumbent bargaining agent, can the incumbent bargaining agent continue to represent the employees? The answer is yes. The incumbent bargaining agent continues to represent the employees and the employer is still bound to recognize the majority representation of the incumbent bargaining agent. Suppose the term of the CBA has expired. Is the CBA still enforceable? The answer is yes. Under the holdover principle, the terms and conditions of the existing agreement subsist until a new agreement is reached. Can the certified bargaining agent and the employer negotiate for the renewal of the CBA during the freedom period? The answer is yes. Under Article 264 of the Labor Code of the Philippines, either party can serve a written notice to terminate or modify the agreement at least 60 days prior to its expiration date. Suppose the parties are already negotiating a new CBA during the 60-day freedom period and a new union files a petition for certification election, what will happen? The CBA negotiations must be suspended. Suppose the incumbent bargaining agent and the employer have already agreed on the terms of the new CBA, but a new union filed a petition for certification election on the 60th day. Should the certification election be ordered? The answer is yes. This is because the petition for certification election was timely filed. Suppose the incumbent bargaining agent lost in the certification election. What will happen to the CBA that it entered into with the employer? Number one, if the new collective bargaining agreement has not yet been ratified, the new bargaining agent may either submit the agreement for ratification or it can disregard the agreement and negotiate for another one. Number two, if the new collective bargaining agreement has already been ratified, the new bargaining agent must respect the agreement under the substitutionary doctrine. What is the substitutionary doctrine? The employees cannot revoke a validly executed CBA by the simple expedient of changing their bargaining agent, especially so when the CBA was ratified by the employees themselves. The new collective bargaining agent must respect the CBA. Who will benefit from the terms and conditions of the CBA? All employees covered by the collective bargaining unit, whether union members or not, because the collective bargaining agreement is the law of the plant. Does the minutes of the CBA negotiations form part of the CBA? The answer is no. The minutes merely reflect the proceedings and discussions. Nothing is considered final until the parties have reached an agreement. Thus, if during the negotiations, the management promised to continue with the practice of granting an across-the-board salary increase ordered by the government, such promise can only be demandable if incorporated in the CBA. Can the party suspend their CBA? The answer is yes because the right to free collective bargaining includes the right to suspend it. The decision to suspend must be approved by the majority of the employees covered by the bargaining unit. Multi-employer bargaining. This is a situation where unions and employers agree in writing to come together for the purpose of collective bargaining. Multi-employer bargaining is possible only for unions who are certified incumbent exclusive bargaining agents and for employers with counterpart unions who are certified incumbent bargaining agents. Only unions or employers who consent to the multi-employer bargaining may participate. Refusal or willingness to participate in the multi-employer bargaining should be communicated in writing to the union or to the employer as the case may be. Negotiations may commence only with regard to the employers and unions who consent to participate in multi-employer bargaining. Procedure in multi-employer bargaining Number 1. Labor unions who desire to negotiate with their employers collectively shall execute a written agreement among themselves. The unions should send a written notice of the desire to negotiate to each employer concerned attaching the written agreement or the certificates of registration of the federation, national, or industry union. Number 2. Employers who agree to group themselves or use their existing associations to engage in multi-employer bargaining shall send a written notice to each of their counterpart legitimate labor unions of their desire to engage in multi-employer bargaining.